Just give me a wave or something. Praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Certainly this is the day the Lord has given unto us, and we ought to rejoice and to be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. This is a wonderful day, not only because it's a day, but it's a day that the Lord has certainly given unto us. And so oh, magnify him, all ye people, and lift up your name of Jesus this morning, for he's worthy to be praised, and we welcome each and every one through the broadcast and through our conference call line and wherever you may be viewing or listening from, we welcome you this morning. We ask that you go ahead and, and share and, and uh, the, the broadcast with a neighbor or friend of yours and so that we may uh, get this broadcast out to as many people because we are going to celebrate our graduates today and we're going to celebrate today Youth Sunday as well. And we want to just glorify the name of God because God is great. Yeah. And certainly he's great to be praised. Pastor Robinson is going to come and open us up with our morning prayer. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, our Father, we come before your presence again with thanksgiving. We come to you this morning, God, with joy in our hearts and in our spirits. Thanking you, O oh Father, for blessing us and allowing us to see one more day. And so now, O oh God, we pray that you would help us not to take it for granted, but that you would help us to use it to bring your name glory, honor, and praise. And so now we ask that you would help us to transform our own personal spaces into your own private sanctuary. God, where we can worship you, where we can uplift you, where we can say thank you. God, will you help us today to be more like you? Will you help us today to worship you in spirit and in truth? Will you allow, oh God, your Holy Spirit to not only fall fresh in this place, but God, let it go over the internet. Let it go over the telephone line so that wherever we are, we may have this testimony. Truly the Lord was in this place. And we'll be mindful to praise your name forevermore. Amen. 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 We're going to praise the Lord with a few praise and worship songs. Wherever you are, wherever you're viewing, you can sing along with us. The song says, Bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with me. And then the chorus is just hallelujah, hallelujah. Highest 
certainly we greet you with Jesus' joy, love, and peace. And let me greet St. Timothy Community Church this morning. Please listen to the following announcements. Our Bible study continues to, re to be on Sundays at 10 a.m. to about 10.30, 10.40. And your uh, research assignments um, are put on our church's Facebook page. Our weekly prayer line is open on Wednesdays at 12 noon. And um, the, I, the number to dial in is 712-432-8399. Again, 712-432-8399 and enter code 795-209. Our birthday group presidents have co are continuously do doing wellness checks. And uh, we're also organizing, have organized the coffee and tea hour uh, with the pastor. Uh, this coming Monday, which is tomorrow, on the 15th, uh, we have to reschedule June's birthday group, group's coffee and tea hour with me, and we're going to postpone it to Tuesday, June 30th at 11 a.m. You will receive a calling post uh, with the information in order to sign in to the Zoom and to the conference call. You may also contact the church office or your president to be able to get the information as well. We thank you for your continued uh, giving to the ministry in your church, and we ask at this time, as you are viewing, and if you have the desire, we uh, pray that you would go ahead and, uh, and give your offering this morning. Uh, if you're on the website, you can go to the uh, donate button and click on that, and you can certainly give your tithes, offerings, or any other contributions that you desire uh, to the church. We do have the Zelle app. And so you can download that to your phone and use the email address of sttimothy at hotmail.com. And that would allow you to be able to make your contribution through the Zelle app. Our reopening of our worship service will be, and our church will be on June, I'm uh, sorry, on Sunday, July 5th. Uh, Sunday, July 5th, we have put some measurements in place and procedures in place. You'll be receiving a letter uh, a letter and or a calling post from the church indicating the uh, procedure on how to enter and how we're going to uh, enter and exit the, uh, the church. On Saturday, June 27th at 9 a.m., we are having our victory prayer walk. So before we come back into our sanctuary, as um, initially come back in our sanctuary, we're gonna march around the church seven times outside and each time we go around, we'll be praying. And on the last go round, uh, which is the seventh time, we will um, pause and I will give the final prayer. And any prayer requests that you have, we'll have a prayer request box outside as well. So any prayer requests that you have, you may also bring those requests with you as we pray, not only for our church and the safety of our church and our people and our members as we come back into the fellowship, but also as we pray for individual concerns as well. We want the walls of Jericho to come down. Amen. We're going to, we, we, our continued prayers are with uh, Frances Hodges as she's recovering from her surgery. Uh, we also want to keep um, Sister Hoyle uh, in our prayers as we have um, put to rest and who has made it over to glory. Um, and uh, Mr. Hoyle, Arthur Hoyle, we call Art, and he surely will be missed in our fellowship. Amen. Tomorrow, we will be having um, another funeral, uh, homegoing service for uh, Rixie McCarroll, and that will be tomorrow at uh, 11 a.m. We have put some procedures in place on how we conduct ourselves coming into the service. Um, we <coughs> are, when you come in, we're asking those that are going to view from 9 to 10.15 will be visitation time, hour, and you would come in it's going to be 10 at a time to view um, Mr. McCarroll, and then you have to leave the church. No one is going to congregate in the sanctuary. Uh, at 10.15, we'll be shutting down visitation, giving us 15 minutes to uh, transition to the funeral piece. And so at 10.30, we will open up the, uh, the doors for the general public and, and others to come in. And, um, and then there is a screening process where uh, you will sanitize in one station, the second station, you'll get um, a, your temperature taken. If your temperature is 100 or above, um, we're gonna um, have a nurse to look, at, look after you um, and try to take another temp 
And if you don't meet the second term, then we're going to have to ask you to, um, to vacate the building. And so um, those are the procedures in which we're, we're looking for. We know that the temperature is one of the, um, one of the symptoms of, of the virus. So we're trying to keep everybody safe, including yourself. And then the, uh, the last station will be the signing in. So we uh, have a record of who is in the church just in case something does happen. We have a record of those that are in the building. So those are the procedures that we ask that you get here at 1030. So it'll take us uh, some time to be able to get everyone processed in so that you may come into the church. And when you come into the church, there are X's on the pews that are already um, designated for social distancing. And you just sit at one of those X's. Uh, you don't sit around it or don't sit under it. Don't sit over it, but sit on it. Uh, so your back should be against the X. Um, and if you are, of course, a husband and wife or in the same household, you can uh, sit together. We want to make mention of the passing of uh, uh, Miss Adams, Addie Adams. She was 96 years old, and her funeral was this past uh, Thursday. Uh, we had two funerals on the same day, and so one was actually here, and the other was at uh, the funeral home. And so we want to keep uh, an, uh, Anita Moore uh, uh, in prayer. That was her mother, and we want to make sure we keep that family certainly in our prayers. Uh, to the church family, thank you for your participation and donation to the Sojourner Truth virtual walk on yesterday. Thank you for helping us to uh, be the largest participate, to participating team. And uh, Sister Moorhead wants you to know that we, uh, we have made a donation to the Sojourner Truth House in the amount of $3,000. Now, I was out here yesterday when we did our virtual walk, and all we did really was just walk around the parking lot, um, and, then, um, and then she went and took the check to, and took some pictures, and then she took the check over to the Soldier in the Truth house. Um, but uh, as I got here, we started walking, uh, our members only did one, one lap, and I said, well, wait a minute, at least could we do two, three, four? <laughs> but we had a great time, and uh, we walked around once and, uh, and had conversation um, uh, the rest of the time was good. Folks were, were, were happy about coming together and, and seeing one another, which was uh, a wonderful thing. Uh, we want to, uh, there is a thank you note here from Sister Rosie and Jesse Washington, and they just simply wanted to thank um, the fellowship, uh, thank the church rather, uh, for all the church has done uh, for uh, responding to uh, the, the loss that they had in their family with their cousin uh, and the passing of their cousin in Cleveland who was age 94, and, um, and, we just, and they just wanted to send a card to say thank you um, for uh, your support uh, in that um, and, and your prayers uh, with them. And also the, uh, the, erection, the erecting of a new building in Gary, which is her daughter's um, restaurant, and uh, she just wanted to give the church and those that participated with that a thank you. Uh, some community announcements real quickly. Um, our Mayor Jerome Prince, and uh, First Lady uh, uh, De Deanne, Deanna rather, Prince is hosting a food giveaway uh, for the Gary residents. You must be a Gary resident, which means you must have a Gary ID. Um, and they will be, it will be on at the Genesis Convention Center, uh, which is located at the first Genesis Plaza in Gary. It's going to be every Saturday. And so this coming Saturday, uh, the 20th and then the 27th at 10.30 a.m. It's a drive-through only. And so um, you want to get there and, uh, and be a part of that. Uh, the other thing is, is that um, we've been talking about all of these um, protests and things that have been going on throughout our nation and even in our community. And I, along with some other leaders, have gathered with our mayor. And uh, the mayor has put together an executive order, uh, which is establishing a commission on the review of police use of force. And it's dated on June 11th on 2020. And so um, I have the executive order here. And if you want a copy of it, you can certainly um, have a copy of, of that executive order. Lastly, uh, finalizing the community announcements. Again, UPS is hiring. And if you know someone who's looking for a job, uh, they can contact Jennifer Long. She's the HR recruiting specialist. And her number is 708-387-4648. That's all the announcements that I have for you this morning. And we're going to turn it over now to our um, choir to give us a selection. And after they finish the selection, I'll come back with a word from the Lord. 
and then we'll move into um, St. John Baptist Church, where Pastor Reagan will come and give his uh, greetings and announcements, and we'll move forward with the graduate celebration. We pray all of our graduates are now online so that we can recognize uh, each and every one of you uh, at that time.
and God. And so worthy to be praised for all that he has done, certainly for each and every one of us. Let us pray together. God, we thank you for this time that we share together in your word. And God, we pray for all of our graduates, oh Lord, and those that graduated high school and those graduating college. God, we just thank you for allowing them to be able to go through that journey of education and academics. And God, we pray right now. Then God, we pray that you would touch this word that it will not only be a blessing to our graduates, but God, let it be also a blessing to all those that are viewing, oh God, that we need a word from you, oh Lord, because without a word, we cannot make it. Without a word, we would not have the strength we have. Without the word, we would not be able to be able to, oh Lord, make it from day to day. And so we thank you, God, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Our lesson this week uh, is coming out of the book of Judges, book of Judges chapter 6. And as I began to read, and we studied this during the week, and also this morning during our Bible study, one of the things I was being prayerful of is having the Lord show a revelation on the text as it connects to our graduates and as it connects to each and every one of us. There is a word that I want to share uh, with us this morning coming from out of Judges, again, chapter 6, and starting at verse 12. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Some may have the translation of King James that says, Mighty man of value. valor. Verse 13, but sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where, all, where are all his wonders that our, that our father has told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of the Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. And am I not sending you? But the Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in, in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. And the Lord answered, last verse, the Lord answered, I will be with you. I will be with you. I will be with you. And strike, and you will strike down all of the Midianites together. I want to talk on this thought and share with us this morning, take the Lord with you. <coughs> take the Lord with you. There is a saying that time waits for no man. And this is true when we look at graduates. Take the time to reflect back over your life from infancy to teenage years, adolescent years, to now moving on to adulthood. Graduation is not only celebrating your academics, your, or your academic achievements for the last 12 years and more, but for me, it was the awakening when I had to leave the home nest and now enter into adult life. It became real to me because mama wasn't pacifying me anymore and grandparents weren't giving me everything I needed anymore. But there was a transition where reality hit from me from, from high school into college that I realized I'm here almost all by myself. This means having more responsibility. This means having accountability for one's actions. This means no one not telling you every minute, don't do that or watch out before that happens or you should not do that. Now you have to use your own, uh, own abilities. You have to use what has been instilled in you in order to take that and bring it to college with you. What got me through elementary school and middle school and high school and college, got me through high school diploma and a, a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and then a doctorate degree, 
It was my pastor, the late Reverend H. Charles McElroy, teaching us Philippians 4.13 as kids that I can do all things through Christ which gives me strength. But then added on to that was my grandmother saying, and her voice always kept in my ear and in my head, don't forget to pray before the test, and don't forget to pray after the test. Don't forget to pray when you wake up in the morning, and don't forget to pray when you lay your head down at night. It was hearing her reminding me that the Lord, or take the Lord with you wherever you go. And because college life imposed both joys and challenges, I would submit to you the same thing, that you must keep Philippians 4.13 or any scripture that you may have in mind on your lips. And also know that the Lord is with you wherever you go. The book of Judges is a Hebrew term used to refer to those whom God raised up to be leaders whom God had raised up to lead his people during the conquest to Canaan. There were, as we've studied this week, 15 judges in the book of Judges, but only 13 are actually mentioned in the book of Judges. All of the judges had great impact on the nation of Israel, but none ruled over the 12 tribes. The authorship of the text of the book of Judges is, is contributed to Samuel. The book of Judges... Uh, God's, God's, God reminds the people in the book of Judges, he reminds the people of Israel that he is the one true and living God because they kept repeatedly indulging in idolatry and immorality of the Canaanites that were the people living amongst them. Can I point out this, that you've got to be careful who you mix yourself with because you don't want to mix yourself with the wrong crowd. God sends and uh, and uh, God sends an oppressor. He sends Israel to be to then repent, repent rather from those that were oppressing them. God sends a deliverer, and then there is peace, and then there is prosperity. In other words, prosperity is success. Some folk think prosperity is just money. No, prosperity in this text is success amongst God's people. Gideon in the text is a military leader. He is a judge. He is a prophet. He is called by God. But even he had to remind himself or be reminded himself by an angel that God is also with him, which draws a question. Why would someone have to question if God is with you if you're supposed to be a military leader and you're supposed to be a judge and you're supposed to be a prophet? Would you not think and know that God is with you? For God allowed the Midianites to take over the Israelites, but God raised up Gideon to defeat the Midianites. And the people of God lived in peace, the Bible says, and prosperity or success. The message today I want to leave with us is that we ought to be able to take the Lord with us wherever we go. Gideon had a, uh, he was put in a position where uh, he had to call and lean on and depend on God. You got to remember that prior to this, God allowed the children of Israel to be taken over by their enemy. They, he allowed them to be able to be oppressed. And in that oppression, uh, they had lost everything, they, almost everything. They lost their crops. They lost their resources. And now you have Gideon that God has now called to the scene. And now Gideon is looking at what he has. He's looking at the army that he has, and the army is not as strong as it used to be. He's looking at the fact that the resources that the people had, the crops are, gone, are almost gone, very little and limited. They're looking at the fact that the livestock is almost gone, and they have really little to nothing. And he started doubting God. God, I can't see you in this nothingness. I can't see you in this, in this reality in which you put me in. But he reminds, an angel reminds Gideon that in spite of the reality you're looking at, God is still with you. Can I pause and do a side note here that even though people look at the city of Gary and say it looks like we got nothing, right? Uh, but I come to tell you in the nothingness, God does something in it. In the beginning of time, God created out of nothing. When he made the world, he created out of nothingness. And I come to tell you, God does his best work out of the nothingness. And if we ought to look at this text very closely, I submit three things to us. Because taking the Lord with us means that, number one, you've, you, you're being told that 
God is there. Taking the Lord with you means that you're being told by somebody that God is ever present. God is there. Look at verse number 12 because verse 12 says that when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, here it is, the Lord is with you. And I just pause to tell us right there that there is an angel that reminds Gideon that God is with him. Now, some theologians may say that this angel is actually a person to, that's giving a message from God on earth. Then there's others that may indicate that this angel is literally, it is God, revealing himself to Gideon. Now, which one it may be, the, the primary focus is, is that there is a message being sent by an angel unto him. In other words, he needed to hear something from God. He needed something to be able to uh, uh, address the situation that he was in. And the Bible says that the angel told him God is with you. All I'm just trying to say to us in my first point is that every now and again, we can get at our low moments in our lives. And we need somebody to come by and tell us that God is with us. If you've been in the valley of the shadow of death, when you've been at your rock bottom, when you've been with challenges that you're faced with in your life, you need somebody to stop by, somebody to call you up, somebody to text you, somebody to tweet you, somebody to come by your house and say to you that God is with you no matter the circumstance, no matter the problem. You need to know that God is with you. And I'm just telling you this morning that God sends us some earthly angels. God sends us some parents. God sends us some grandparents. God sends us some friends. God sends us some church members. God sends us some people in our lives that would stop by and pause and tell us that God is going to make a way out of nowhere. Somebody has been there when, when you were at the back was against the wall, but yet somebody stopped by and told you everything is going to be all right. Somebody uh, was uh, at a point in your life where you didn't know how you want to go on, but yet somebody stopped by and gave you a word from the Lord and said that God is going to pull you up out of your rut. I don't know who it is this morning that I'm preaching to this morning, but you may be at your rock bottom, but I come to tell you there are some angels around that God is going to call to your side. If you're going to, if you're going to take the Lord with you, uh, you got to, secondly, you got you to gotta, you gotta know that you have what it takes. If you're going to take him with you, you got to know that, that you, you, you have what it takes. And it's right there in verse 12, part B. Because after the angel says that the Lord appeared and he said to him, the Lord is with you. But here's the second part he says. There's not a period there, there's a comma. And he says, the Lord is with you. He says, here it is, mighty warrior, NIV says. The King James says, a man of, of, of valor. And both of those man of battle literally simply just means is that, that, that you have a great courage in facing danger or adversity. You have great courage in order to face challenges in your life. That's what a uh, man of valor or a, uh, a, a person of, of a warrior is all about. And that's what the text is reminding us is that we are warriors. In other words, you've got what it takes. Now, 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 now Gideon had to realize that, that he had to realize his identity and who he was. And when you know who you are and who you, when you know who has called you, you can stand in that authority and in that power. Gideon, I come to remind you, not only are you a prophet, not only are you a judge, but you are a military man. And I come to tell somebody that all of us got a little military in us. All of us got a little fight in us. I, I know we like to roll up our fists and fight with one another. And then when the devil beats us up, we want to run under, uh, under, under a carpet or wander under a pew. But I come to tell you when the devil is coming after you you've got to learn how to fight oh well preacher pastor how do I fight you've got to learn how to fight by praying that thing off of you you've got to learn how to fight by uh, lifting your hands and giving God the praise and the worship see the devil wants you to be discouraged the devil wants you to be depressed the devil wants you to be as if you are a failure but I come to tell you in your failures or in your distress in your situation in your disappointment you ought to be able to still lift your hands up and and glorify the name of the Lord because all that does is serve notice to the enemy that you have not discouraged me you have not gotten rid of me but I'm still here and while 
while I'm still here, I'm going to open up my mouth and praise the Lord. While I'm still here, I'm still going to serve the Lord. While I'm still here, I'm still going to do what God has called me to do. I come to tell you, you got to know you've got what it takes as a warrior in you. And when you go off to college and when you experience life for yourself, mama ain't there, daddy ain't there, grandparents ain't there, church family ain't there, you got to know there's a warrior in you. You're able to conquer anything that seems to block you from, from it succeeding in life. Yes. Last thing I want to leave with us is that when you take the Lord with you, that means you got to know that God is with you. Now you say, well, Pastor Preacher, you, you said something about the Lord being with you in the first point, and now you're saying the Lord being with me again in your third point. What well, is two different lords being with you? See, the first one, the angel said the Lord will be with you. But look at the text in verse 16. Because in verse 16 it says, the Lord answered, I will be with you. There's a difference when someone tells you God is with you, when you hear from yourself that God is with you. And all I come to tell is tell somebody, you know when God is with you, when you can hear God for yourself. You know when God is with you is when you stuck in something and you don't know how you're going to make it and all you got to do is pray to God and God gives you an answer. He may not come when you want him. Lord have mercy, but he'll show up right on time. And somebody needs to hear that this morning. You've been hearing from somebody else saying God is with you, God is with you, but now you ought to hear for yourself that windows of heaven are open and God is speaking to his people and he's letting us know that he is with us. He's with us. His presence is with us. And when God is with us, here it is, we get peace. When we hear the word of God, God calms our minds. He gives us peace. And here it is, he gives us success. Which means our success is not predicated on who is attached to us, but our success is predicated on who is in us. Okay, somebody missed it. Our success is not based on what our mama did or what our friends have succeeded. And somebody always tags, tags on or hangs on to somebody else's success. But your success is not coming from somebody else. But your success comes from the God that's within you that causes you to succeed. Let, let, me, let, me, let me close with this. The, um, when, I, when I left, home and went to college, I was so excited, I packed up my suitcase, threw my Nike sneakers in there, uh, Kalan, I threw my Jordans in there, I got my uh, fake real jewelry <laughs> and threw it in there, and I was excited about going off to college. And I remember getting there and meeting my roommate, trying to get there first so I can get the first bed and choose my spot. And then setting up my room the way I wanted to be set up before my roommate got there. By the time he got there, I was all set up, ready to go. And he could not change anything because I was looking at him with that look. But I remember that when I packed all my stuff up, took my suitcase, went to school. I remember even getting my book bag and putting my textbook in there and my pens and pencils and my ruler and my calculator and packing up my book bag and taking it with me on my shoulder and heading off to class. And as I was prepared for class, the teacher would say, bring out your textbooks and put out your pens and paper and loose leaf binders and so forth, and as I reached in and pulled out, was prepared for class. The other thing that I reminded myself is that as we prepare for school, we got to make sure we take some other things with us. Right. Don't just take your books and your, your rulers and your calculator and put it in your bag, but I come to tell you, I got some more things you ought to take with you. When you take, when you go to school and you take your book bag with you, when it's on your shoulder, I want some things you, I got to give you some things to put in your bag. One thing you ought to put in your bag is some money. 
take some money. Make sure you hit your parents up. Make sure you hit some church members up because you're going to need some money when you get to college. Make sure that you apply for colleges, apply for applications for scholarships and grants because you're going to need some money to be able to pay for your education. Put money in your bag. But then I want to tell you one more thing to put in the bag. Put some memories in your bag. Remember what your parents have said and remember the good times you've shared with your loved ones while you were with them at your home. Take the family photos. Take mama's picture, daddy's picture, and whoever was raising you picture with you and put it in your bag. Because you need to remind yourself when you get a little homesick. Another thing you ought to put in your bag is you ought to put parent instructions. I know your parents have told you a whole lot of stuff. Some stuff you were happy with, some stuff you didn't like, some stuff you threw tantrums about. But it's going to help you when you get to college. Put some parent instructions in your bag. But I come to tell you as the pastor, as your pastor, you ought to be able to take the word of God. Take the Bible and put the word of God in your bag because you're going to need the word of God to be able to pull you out of some tough times in your life. I come to tell you there's one more thing I want you to put in your bag. Put the Lord in your bag. Take the Lord with you. In other words, when you get to college, you ought to every now and again, before you even open up your textbook, pray and tell God, help me through this. Every now and again, you got to realize you got to take the Lord with you. And when you take the Lord with you, he'll make a way for you. What else I got to put in my bag? Put some prayer in your bag. Pray in the morning. Pray in the noonday. Pray in the midnight hour. Put prayer in your bag. What else you need to put in your bag? Put some praise in your bag. You've got to learn how to praise God as a young people. You've got to learn how to praise God. It don't matter. Well, I don't do all that. Well, every now and again, you've got to wake up and thank God for waking you up in the morning. That's a praise. You've got to thank God for starting you on a brand new day. You've got to thank God for his mercy and his grace and his loving kindness. You've got to thank God for pulling you up and bringing you out. You've got to thank God. You've got to praise God. That's why David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. But before I leave you today, there's one more thing that you ought to put in your bag is that worship. You ought to be able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. When nobody else lifts up their hands, you got to learn how to lift up your hands and worship the Lord. Tell the Lord how you love him. Surrender your life unto the Lord. You got to learn how to worship the Lord. And part of worshiping the Lord is going to church on Sunday morning. Well, you may say, my church is always in Gary. I don't care where you are. The spirit of the Lord is find a place where you can go and worship the Lord. Find a place where you can go and connect with other saints. Find a place where you can go to be able to lift up your mighty God. Is there anybody in here that says, I took the Lord with me? That's why I'm here today, because the Lord has been walking with me. The Lord has been talking with me. The Lord has been traveling with me. That's why I'm still here today, because he works. He works in the morning. He works in the noonday. He works in the midnight hour. That's why I'm still smiling. That's why I'm still making it because the Lord is with me and everywhere I go I take him with me everywhere I go I call on his name everywhere I go he is worthy of my praise and the glory is there anybody in here that don't mind praising the Lord for a few moments and thanking God for being with you put it in your bag take him with you wherever you go I don't care what kind of bag you got, put it in your bag. And don't let nobody go in your bag and take your stuff. I used to hate going to school sometimes and folks said, do you got a pencil? Do, do you got a, do you got a, a loose leaf paper? Don't let folk take stuff out of your bag because what's in your bag is for you because you got to make it, you got to survive. And if you give everything out your bag, you will have nothing for you. Don't let folk take it from you. But everything that has been instilled in you in the church, life of the church, bag it and take it and keep it with you, and God will take care of you.
God's people said amen. 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 To God be the glory for the marvelous things that he has done. Thank you, Pastor Jackson, for reminding some, informing others, but encouraging us all to take the Lord with us wherever, wherever we might go. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, we greet you on this, another Lord's Day as God has seen fit yet again to allow us to gather together uh, to worship his high and holy name. We uh, gather today as a St. John Baptist Church family uh, worshiping under our church-wide theme, the year of transformation. And we invite uh, those of you that might be listening to join us uh, in our journey of transformation. Listen, I want to share just a few announcements with you and then we will move forward in this worship experience. We want to be uh, in prayer for those that are sick, shut in, and bereaved uh, in our church family. We want to be in prayer uh, for Sister Nikki Dates and her family as Nikki lost her uh, aunt last week. Funeral services were held this past Thursday uh, in memory and in honor of her aunt, Miss Jessie Dates. So we want to make sure we keep uh, that entire family in prayer. Also received a message uh, last night and again this morning uh, that Sister Helen Davis uh, lost her brother Frank suddenly uh, last night. And so we will be in prayer and in touch uh, with the Davis family. And also want to be in prayer uh, for one of our graduates, uh, Sister Mine Jefferson, uh, whose father is critically ill even in Indianapolis today. Um, got a chance to hang out and chit chat with her yesterday, but want uh, Mine to know that uh, your church family and your pastor uh, is praying for you as well as your dad. It is the second uh, Sunday in the month and always on the second Sunday we like to acknowledge those in our church family uh, that are uh, having birthdays or celebrating anniversaries during this month and so uh, from me to you we want to wish you uh, a happy birthday and or a happy anniversary as you celebrate throughout this month. Uh, thirdly we want to welcome to our church family uh, Sister Nicole Colors, uh, who has been watching our broadcast over the internet, um, and she has wanted to uh, unite with the St. John Baptist Church, and we've chit-chatted with her um, and taken her in and extend to her all of the rights and privileges uh, that come along with being a member of the St. John Church family. We've also had those to complete a new members class virtually. I did not bring my, the certificates with me, uh, but we will be acknowledging you um, here real soon. I want to thank you for uh, your faithfulness and for your dedication uh, as you continue to study the Word of God, complete uh, the new members class, and even those of you that are uh, consistently participating in Sunday school. Uh, as we mentioned this morning on our prayer call, we have the books for this quarter in. Uh, we ask that you would just swing by the church, pick up a book uh, for Sunday school. That way you will uh, have the opportunity to study uh, the Word of God prior to Sunday morning and have the uh, opportunity to actively engage with the instructor uh, during the Sunday school hour, which starts about 9.30 uh, on our conference call. Uh, in that same vein, let me pause now and thank uh, again Pastor Jackson and the fine people of the St. Timothy uh, Community Church for allowing us to continually uh, come over here week in and week out uh, and share our convictions uh, with you, share in your worship service. We thank you. Uh, because as we have learned about this uh, coronavirus pandemic is that it has taught us what we should have learned by now is that it has taught us that there's more than one way to do a thing number one and number two that we really are all in this together and so i thank you for the opportunity to partner with you uh, to worship with you uh, as we prepare to even go back into our building on the 5th of july you need to understand that we are securing all of the necessary equipment uh, to begin to stream uh, from 2457 Massachusetts Street and should the opportunity ever occur for us to worship again should you decide you want to use our air our electricity our cameras uh, you're more than welcome uh, to join us amen thank you so much uh, for being a blessing thank God for both of these music ministries thank God for our media uh, ministry that uh, have been here and on point each and every uh, Sunday morning. Thank God uh, for you that are tuning in. If you have not given your tithes or your offerings uh, for this week, let me ask you to use this opportunity to do that. Uh, there are several ways. If you're going to do it right now, of course, go to our church website 
uh, St. John, BC, at B as in boy, C as in Charlie, Gary, dot com. Scroll down to the bottom of the page, hit that donate button there. Uh, and once you hit that donate button, it will take you to PayPal. PayPal is going to ask you for an email address. Just put in our corporate email address, which is admin at stjohnbcgary.com, and then you can make your contribution there. Well, Reverend, I don't like giving over the computer. I don't like giving over this Internet. That's all well and good. You run down to the post office, put a stamp on an envelope, address it to the church. You don't got money for a stamp? That's fine. You don't want to do that? We're open every day, Tuesday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Swing by the church. I'd love to see you. Drop it uh, in the mail or bring it on in the office um, and smile at us. But whatever uh, the Lord leads you to do, understand that we would greatly appreciate uh, what you will do as we so much appreciate what you already have done to make sure that the church continues to operate and function uh, at a level of excellence. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Today is our prayer. This is Youth Day. This is Graduate Sunday, and we're pausing both of these churches. Amen. We are pausing both of these churches to celebrate our graduates. That's why we're not in a jacket or a shirt and tie today. We have declared today Spirit Day, and we've asked our uh, church family and any of those that will participate to uh, put on any uh, paraphernalia from your alma mater, whether that's high school or college, or put on uh, any Greek letters or for any fraternal organization you might belong to because we want to encourage uh, our graduates in the very best way possible. So Pastor Jackson, I have already asked that he would excuse my time, not trying to be disrespectful. I'm just trying to play along. Amen. 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 I dare not ask the St. John Church family to do anything uh, that we're not prepared to do. And hopefully what you will discover by day's end is that you really don't have to be in a shirt and tie, robe, or clergy collar to proclaim the word of God because amen, amen. The word of God is the word of God. Amen, amen. And so it is our endeavor uh, to rightly divide it here directly. But before we get to that, uh, we want to acknowledge uh, the graduates first from the St. John Baptist Church. And I'm going to try to do this in alphabetical order. First of all, I don't know if I can see you. Amen. Amen. I want to acknowledge Mr. Denarly Baker, uh, who graduated from Gary Middle College. Uh, Denarly is still uh, trying to decide if he's going to enter into the military or if he, he, he also wants to uh, take a look at musical engineering. And so we congratulate Mr. Denarly Baker. I don't see your face uh, on this screen, man. Um, and if I don't see it real soon, I'm coming by your house at the end of service. Amen. I also want to congratulate Skylar Cardine, uh, who graduated from Gary Lighthouse College Preparatory Academy. She will be attending DePaul University in Chicago, majoring in health and science. She graduated with 3.0 grade point average. She also participated in cheerleading, dance, volleyball, and was the student body president for her junior and senior year. Congratulations, Skyler. Amen. Amen. Mr. Tyler Hemmings is a graduate of the Andrean High School. He will be attending Butler University in Indianapolis, Indiana on a four-year academic scholarship. Amen. Majoring in psychology and pre-med. He already has uh, attained 12 college credits uh, while still in high school. He's a member of the Honor Society, played on the football team and wrestling, and also had an internship at some doctor's name that I cannot pronounce, who was a podiatrist. Amen. Amen. And so we congratulate Tyler as well. And finally, no, not finally, my Nate Jefferson. Still City Academy graduate who will be attending my alma mater, Indiana University, Purdue University of Indianapolis, majoring in elementary education. She graduated with a 3.0 grade point average. She uh, was also a mentor to ninth and 10th grade uh, students. And then finally, we have Ms. Tamaya Rivers who graduated from the Excel Center. She's going to enter right into the workforce. And so we pause today to say congratulations to our five high school graduates, Tyler Hemmings, Skylar Cardine, Mine, Jefferson, Denarly Baker, and Tamaya Rivers. May God be with you as you pursue your future endeavors. Amen. Amen. At this time, Pastor Jackson will come and acknowledge the graduates from the St. Timothy Community Church. Receive him now.
I'm sorry, and uh, oh. in our graduates that are on, we have a sister uh, Radley that's going to come and acknowledge all of our graduates. When she calls your name, just kind of wave so we can kind of see who you are, those that may not know who you are. First, I'd like to give uh, honor to God, to Pastor Jackson, uh, Pastor Robinson, to all of you out there in social media land, St. Timothy and St. John family. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to some and present to others our 2020 graduates. So I recognize the college graduates first. Our first graduate is Royce Ashton Johnson. <laughs> Royce is the son of the late Rhonda Davis and the grandson of William and Pamela Johnson. He is a graduate of DePaul University with a Bachelor of Arts degree in kinesiology with honors. Royce is <laughs> Royce was named to the Spring 2020 Dean's List that recognizes students with a GPA of 3.5 or higher. He has applied to several universities for their master's program and has been admitted to the Master of Science in Medical Science program at the University of Kentucky College of Medicine for the fall semester 2020. Christian Parker Robinson. Christian is the son of Kim Robinson. He's a graduate of Morehouse College. With a Bachelor of Arts degree in English with a minor in journalism. Christian plans to work and attend law school in the future. Alfonso Blackwell III. Alfonso is the son of Alfonso and Maya Blackwell and Nicole Good. He's a graduate of Anderson University with a Bachelor of Arts degree with a major in Media, Cinema, Art, and Journalism with a 3.4 GPA. Wow. He plans a career in education and coaching. Stephen Hunter. <laughs> Stephen is the son of Mayor Elgin. He's a graduate of Roosevelt University Heller College of Business with a master's in hospitality and tourism management. Right. With, with a GPA of 3.9. <laughs> Stephen was also selected 2020 Student of the Year. Now I'd like to uh, recognize our high school graduates. We have Cameron Hayes. She's the daughter of Russell and Darian Hayes, Amen. who is a graduate of Monster High School. She participated in the Children's Choir, Girl Scouts, the Youth Usher Board. She plans to attend Indiana University Bloomington and become a pharmacist. Next, we have Edward Prentice IV. Edward is the son of Edward and Melanie Prentice. He he's a graduate of East Chicago Central, and he assisted with the media streaming ministry here at St. Timothy. Amen. He plans to attend Purdue West Lafayette and major in mechanical engineering. Amen. We also have Anthony Francis Hightower, Jr. Anthony is the son of Alfonso and Ma Maya Blackwell and Anthony Hightower. He is a graduate of Kenwood Academy with a 4.99 GPA. <laughs> he participated with the St. Timothy Theater Guild. He plans to attend the University of Illinois at Springfield and major in biology on a pre-med track. 
Each high school graduate will receive an engraved King James Bible from Women's Fellowship. Sunday School is presenting gift cards and other mementos to the graduates. The Youth Usher Board is presenting a certificate and a $50 monetary donation to its participants for services rendered, and that goes to Cameron Hayes. Amen. The Men's Fellowship is awarding a monetary donation of $100. The Setzer Academic Scholarship is awarding $1,500 to Cameron Hayes. Wow. Now we have a first time scholarship award, the Jonathan Moorhead Achievement and Service Scholarship, which is awarded to Anthony Hightower Jr. in the amount of $1,000. It's awarded by his mother, Mrs. Shirley S. Moorhead. Now before I announce the St. Timothy Community Church Scholarship, uh, Pastor Jackson and the scholarship committee felt compelled to provide a short proclamation on behalf of their longtime member, Mrs. Alpha Rogers, who recently made her transition to be with the Lord. And it reads, whereas Mrs. Alpha Rogers was a founding member of the St. Timothy Scholarship Committee, and whereas Alpha Rogers was a true champion for education, and whereas Alpha Rogers wholeheartedly believed that education was the key to empowering the next generation of youth. And whereas Alpha Rogers gave of herself unselfishly to the scholarship committee. And whereas Alpha Rogers has left a great legacy. And we thank her for the many years of dedicated service to the scholarship committee. Now, therefore, please join us in celebrating Mrs. Rogers' dedication and commitment to education on this 14th day of June, 2020. Humbly submitted, Scholarship Committee members, St. Timothy Community Church. <laughs> the St. Timothy Community Church Scholarship is offered to graduates based on services rendered to the many ministries of the church. This scholarship is awarded to Cameron Hayes, in the amount of $1,775. I'd like to congratulate all the graduates and ask them to pick up their, their gifts either today after service or sometime during the week during office hours. And I'd like to leave you with these two quotes. I don't know who the authors are, but I certainly give them the credit. The first one says, wherever you planted, bloomed with grace. And the second one says, when we step out on faith, God turns our feet in the direction of his will, paving them, paving the way with his love. Yes. Thank you and God bless you. We congratulate all of our graduates and we wish you all well, and we thank God for all that God has allowed you to do, and we're so proud of each and every one of you. And again, you can pick up your, your um, scholarship um, and your awards uh, today. I'll be here to about 2 o'clock. If you come at 201, I will not be here. <laughs> all right, so we want to um, move forward, and um, now we move on to the um, selection from the St. John Baptist Church.
love you more than anything. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. You are my shelter from the storm. When all my friends were gone, you were right there all alone. I never know a love like this before. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. Love me in your arms. You are my shelter from the storm. You were right there all alone. I never know a love like this before. Oh, I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. And adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. I worship and adore you. Just want.
let me do a couple of things here real quick, and that is express my condolences to Sister Hoyle. I must admit I've been running a day behind, and by the time uh, Thursday services for Brother Hoyle uh, took place, um, I realized that on Friday um, I was not able to pay my respects, but certainly apologize for that. Um, this new schedule of things has, these, has us run a little bit a little bit behind. Uh, I was in the back a moment ago, and I remember that when I went to even see Denarly on Thursday, he told me he had a job interview on Friday. Um, and when he called me on Friday to, to tell me how the interview went at the office, he told me that he had a second interview today. And so I don't have to go by his house uh, for him not being on the Zoom call. He's at his second uh, job interview, and we're praying, amen, amen. amen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that he does, in fact, uh, get that job and becomes a faithful tither. Amen. 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 Let me call your attention uh, to 2 Timothy chapter 1. I was originally going to read it from the NIV, but I like the language of the King James Version a little better. Uh, so turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 very familiar passage beginning with verse 5 from the King James Version of the Bible you will find these words when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice and I am persuaded that is in thee also wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou Stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Verse 8, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. I'm Israel, yes. read verse 9. Who has saved us, uh -huh. and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus, yes, before the world began. Now, this is the word of the Lord, and I believe that it is true the grass will wither and the flower will fade, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor Jackson, uh, for preaching purposes today, I want to tag this text with this topic. Uh, Y'all catch this. You've got what it takes. You've got what it takes. I solicit your prayers. Butter, sugar, eggs, flour. If you're going to make a pound cake, you must have yeah. butter, Come on. eggs, yeah. sugar, and flour. You got to have these four ingredients. Now, where you go from there is up to you. If you want to put icing on it, some sprinkles, you want to add flavoring, lemon, or vanilla, or even strawberry. Uh, if you want to put candles on the top. You can't do that if you don't mix together butter, sugar, eggs, and flour. Anything you do after you mix together and bake the butter, eggs, sugar, and flour is optional. What is important, what is paramount, is that you make sure, if you're going to bake a cake, that you have what is absolutely necessary. Uh -huh. What is important is that you make sure that when you start off you have everything that is required. What is important is that you have, here it is, a foundation upon which to build and a foundation upon which you can then turn around and adorn and decorate. Yes. Too many times in our society we have people that try to decorate cakes that have not met the minimum 
standard to even qualify as a cake. We must make sure that we have what it takes before we begin to try to decorate what it is we do have. And as we spend time today uh, talking to the graduates of both of these churches and then allowing others uh, to eavesdrop, I want to remind you today that as you embark upon this new chapter in your life, beloved, that you already have what it takes to be successful. I'm a halfway finished already, but when we land over in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, you find uh, Paul is writing a letter to his young budding prophet uh, Timothy, and he's letting him know uh, that I remember our last interaction, I remember our last encounter, and I remember how distraught you were, but I need you to know that I've been watching you, and I need you to know that before I plant you in Ephesus, I know what I'm getting ready to plant, and he says to Timothy, he says, I already know that you have what it takes. I know you're going to miss me, and I want to get back to you, but just in case I don't, if I don't see you again, you need to know that you already have everything you need to fulfill the calling that has been placed on your life. I know that you might ha be having second thoughts on how to proceed, and as you have those second thoughts, as it is natural for people to have, you need to reassure yourself that you already have what it takes. And I guess I'm talking to the graduates right here as you begin Again, this new chapter, some of you are getting ready to relocate. Some of you are getting ready to move away. Some of you are getting ready to enter into the workforce. And now you, sent, you have a sense of fear and perhaps even trepidation. You have a fear of the unknown because mama, as pastor said, might not be there. Daddy might not be there. But I need you to know that wherever you land, wherever you're going, you already have what it takes to be who God has called you to be. I got three things I want to unpack uh, from this text. I know our time is well spent. If you say amen, we can get out of here real fast. If you put your hands up uh, on your emojis, on your Facebook status, we'll know that you're getting what we're talking about. I want to hit these three points, unpack them real quick, and then I'll get out of your way so you can come, St. Timothy, and pick up your gifts from Pastor. I don't want to have him here waiting on you past 2 o'clock. Here it is. Here's how I know you have what it takes. It's right here uh, in, in the text. We have, we have what it takes because we have inherited it from our ancestors. Yes. We have inherited from our ancestors. It's right there in verse uh, 5 when Paul says to Timothy, uh, I recall, I remember the faith uh, that was first in your grandmama, your grandmother, uh, Lois, and then it was in your mama, Eunice, and now I see the faith uh, that your grandmama had, and I see the faith that your mama had, and now I see that same faith in you. And I need to tell this generation that the reason why you have what it takes is because you got it from your mama, you got it from your grandmom. You have what it takes because you got it from your daddy and you got it from your grandfather. I, I, I am an activist uh, just in my nature, but the problem I have with this modern day movement is this slogan that they have adopted that says we are not our ancestors. I got a problem with that slogan. I know what they're trying to say, but the slogan is incorrect with this modern day movement when they say we are not our ancestors because the fact of the matter is we are who we are as a result of our ancestors. I know they didn't fight the way we fight. I know they didn't march quite like we march. I know they weren't as boisterous as we were, but that is no reason to disrespect or disregard or, dis, uh, or try to demean what they stood for and what they did. We are who we are. I am who I am. You are who you are. And not because of or not by default, but because our ancestors Ancestors had a certain kind of faith. Yes, yes. Our ancestors had a certain kind of fortitude. Our, our ancestors had a certain kind of perseverance. Our ancestors had a certain kind of vision, and they took that fortitude. They took that perseverance. They took that vision, and they deposited over on the inside of us. We are who we are because we stand on the shoulders of those that came before us. Yes. Our ancestors were risk takers uh, when they were told uh, that they could not read. They would find master's books and sneak out and hide under a tree and sound out word by word, syllable by syllable, and understand precept by precept. Although they were told no, they understood that there was value in knowledge, value in education. They took the risk, even risking their own lives. Yes, yes. They
they were protesters before we knew what protesting was about. And they did it with minimal support. Now we have movements that are financially undergirded uh, by anybody and everybody. But when our grandparents were marching in the streets, they had not that support. They did not have economic support. They did not have civil support. There were no police protecting them. In fact, the police were the ones that were brutalizing them. They had no legislative laws on the books that would stop them from encountering harm. I'm trying to help you understand that we ought not despise despise what brought us. We ought not despise what kept us because we are who we are. It was our ancestors who taught us how to make it uh, with a little bit. It was our ancestors who taught us how to make it when it seemed they didn't have anything at all. Graduates, I need you to understand, because while I know most of you, I feel safe in saying that when none of y'all born with a silver spoon in your mouth, uh, when, when, when none of y'all born uh, with a silver spoon in your mouth, somebody had to sweat, somebody had to bleed, somebody had to work, somebody had to toil in order for you to have what you have, in order for you to go where you're going. And I need you to understand that they weren't the first ones to do it, but your mama and daddy got it from their mamas and daddy. They got it from your grandparents. Have you ever noticed that our grandparents had money even when we did not because they knew how to make a whole lot out of a little bit? Have you ever noticed that when you didn't have any food in your own cupboard, you can call your grandmama, and although she was not working, although she just had a little social security, although she just had a little pension, she always had enough for her in her house to eat, not just for her house, but enough for her family, and if Ray Ray and Pookie them should come from down the street, grandmama knew how to stir up a little flour and stir up a little crackling and stir up a little water and make gravy because she understood how to make a whole lot out of a little bit. I'm trying to tell you, while we might not be our ancestors, God God, I wish we had the same kind of fortitude and the same kind of insight and the same kind of vision they had. Paul says to Timothy, I know you got what it takes because uh, I know your mama. <laughs> yeah. I know you got what it takes because uh, I know your grandmama. And I'm telling you, graduates, uh, that I know you have what it takes because I know that you come from good stock. You have what you have. Faith that you got. You've inherited from your ancestors. Not, not only is, has it been inherited by our, from our ancestors, but it has been acknowledged by onlookers. Uh, look at your Bible in verse 6. It says, Wherefore, I put into remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee, by the putting on of my hands. I like, I like this verse. The Lord just showed it to me even this morning in a whole new perspective, and I hope I can articulate it like he gave it to me. But he says, uh, not only do I know the faith that you have faith in you, but, but other folk know that, that you got the faith in you. It is being acknowledged by onlookers. I need to pause right there and tell somebody uh, that there's always somebody looking. Uh, he says that there is always somebody looking. The reason Paul says that I put my hands on you is because I've been watching you. And beloved, I need to tell you uh, that there is always somebody looking. And as they are looking at you, they're going to make a determination about you. Not only will they make a determination about you as they are looking at you, but they'll also make a determination about the God you say you serve says, uh, 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 I need you to remember that I put my hands on you. Uh, and as a result, uh, there is a gift on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Lord uh, showed me uh, even this morning. Uh, he showed me the importance of a spiritual relationship and a spiritual mentor. Uh, travel back with me uh, to the Old Testament book and you see the relationship between uh, Elijah and his uh, understudy Elisha. 
and how Elijah was caught up on a chariot of fire uh, to be raptured into glory for he did not see death and he asked uh, Elisha his understudy what do you want me to give unto you understand that Elisha did not say I want your popularity understand that Elisha did not say I want to be able to work miracles like you work miracles understand that Elisha didn't say I want to be able to preach like you preach no no what Elisha said to Elijah as Elisha was getting ready to go into glory is I want a double portion of your anointing that that's what he said and when Elijah was going up on that chariot of fire the Bible said that he took his mantle and he threw it back and Elisha caught it and Elisha because he had a double portion of Elijah's anointing began to work miracles that Elijah never could work what's your point preach I'm trying to tell you the importance of having a spiritual mentor in your life we don't only see it with Elijah and Elisha but we see it right here with Paul and with Timothy Paul says to Timothy that I know what's on the inside of you because we've been in relationship with one another we have been uh, connected with one another we have hung around one another and because I understand that God was going to work a great work in you I took my hands and I placed them on you what we see here is an optical demonstration of the transference of power because they were in relationship with one another I'm trying to tell these graduates that might be listening under the sound of my voice today that wherever you go you need to find yourself in somebody's church where somebody can pour into you where somebody can develop you where somebody can put their hands on the inside of you understand that Paul didn't invest the gift God invested the gift but because Paul saw that Timothy was working with something he thought it not robbery to turn around and invest in him he says all that I have I now place it on you yes. there's always there's always somebody looking uh, uh, God deposited uh, Paul acknowledged it uh, uh, because sometimes here it is and I'm a living witness to this uh, because Paul acknowledged it because sometimes people will see in you what you don't even see in yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, people will see in you what you don't even see in yourself. Now that's why you need a mentor in your life, somebody that can help cultivate and develop you. He says, now that God has deposited, now that I have acknowledged it, now that I try to confirm it, uh, what I need you to do, Timothy, uh, is to stir it up. Uh, he, he says, I need you to stir up the gift uh, that's on the inside of you. He, he says, if I can put this graduates in modern day terms, he says, I, I don't need you to become comfortable uh, with what I've said. I don't need you to become comfortable uh, what, with what you've already accomplished. What I need you to do now is acknowledge that you have it, and then I need you to begin to work it. Yeah, he says, I need you to begin to stir it up. I can't let you uh, let it stay the way it is, because if you don't develop, if you don't grow, if you don't mature, then you have wasted the investment that has been poured on the inside of you. But if you want to make full proof of your calling, I'm going to need you to stir up what's on the inside of you. And I like this word stir because what it really means uh, is to activate. What, what it really means, coach, is to not just activate, but to agitate. And can I pause parenthetically right there and help somebody that might be eavesdropping on this little conversation today understand that if you're really going to become what God would have you to become, you're going to have to be prepared to face some agitation in your life. Why? Because the devil goes to and fro like a roaring lion seeking whom he might devour, but here's what we must understand, that confrontation is not a sign that God is against us. What confrontation does, it serves as, an, as, as a reason for us to activate the faith that is on the inside of us. Can I testify here real quick? There's some prayers I never would have prayed had I not been agitated. There's some worship services I never would have gone to had I not been agitated. There's some praises I never would have rendered unto God had I not been agitated, but here it is, all things 
things work together for the good to them that love God who are the called according to his purpose. So don't you get upset. Don't you be dismayed just because you're going to have to go through some trouble. And believe you me, when you're in college and when you're on the workforce, you're going to have to go through some trouble. Some folk ain't going to like you because you're too tall. Some folk ain't going to like you because you're too short. Some folk ain't going to like you because you're too thick or too thin or too dark or too light. But here it is. Use it to activate. Use it to agitate the faith that is on the inside of you so that you may be able to stand as a rightful witness for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't, don't, don't let it be in vain. He says, stir up the gift. Yes. yes. Come on, Pastor. Yeah, tell me. He says, stir up the gift that is on the inside of you. Here it is. Uh, go back to Proverbs and talking about gifts because the writer of Proverbs says this, uh, that your gift is what will, will make room for you and bring you into the presence of great men. Paul piggybacks on that. He says, if you want to get into the presence of great men, if you want room to be made for you, you ain't going to have to do anything illegal. You ain't going to have to shake nobody's hand. You ain't going to have to give a certain sign or a symbol, but it's because of what God has deposited on the inside of you. It is your gift. Yes, yes. yes sir. Come on, yes. Pastor. Because can't nobody do what God has called you to do like God has gifted you to do it. You might not be able to sing like such and such. You might not be able to preach like such and such. But can I tell you, there's something. There's a certain something that only you can do the way you can do it. So don't you be ashamed. I'm right here in my third verse. Don't you be ashamed of what God has put on the inside of you. It has been inherited from our ancestors. It has been acknowledged by onlookers. But here's the most important part. It has been affirmed by God. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Verse 7 in the text. It says, uh, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and the sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God who has saved us, called us with a holy call, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which has given us in Christ Jesus before the world ever began. Here it is. What we have, we have inherited. What we have uh, has been acknowledged. Not only has it been acknowledged, but it has been affirmed because God gave it to us. Because God gave it to us, we have nothing to fear. With God on your side, you can do anything but fail. God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has given us rather power. Power to do what? Power to do right even in the face of wrong. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of power and of love. Love to do what? To love those that despitefully use you. Love to love those that who are unlovable. And he's not only given us peace and love and power, but he's given us a sound mind. What, what, what good is a mind that is not sound if you don't know how to turn it around and make it sound? What, what, what good is it to live? Yeah, that's what I want to say. What good is it to live in this life and not have a sound mind? But God gives us a sound mind so that when things are not 
going our way. We still have peace that surpasses all human understanding so that when we don't have two nickels to rub together, we know that my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. When we get old and our body starts to break down, we still have a sound mind knowing that I once was young and now I'm old, but I still have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. God has given us a sound mind so that when the winds begin to blow, when the lightning begins to flash, when the billows begin to roll, we still understand that God is able to say, peace, be still. You have nothing to fear about because God has already given you everything that you need. Yes. Because he's given it to us, I'm done. It eliminates the shame. Paul says to Timothy, don't you be ashamed of the gospel. Don't you be ashamed of the one who saved you. And don't you be ashamed of me, his prisoner. Graduates, I need to tell you that wherever you land, that you need not be ashamed. Be proud. Be proud of where you came from. Uh, be proud of what you have experienced. Be proud to be blood bought. Be proud to be fire baptized. Be proud to be Holy Ghost filled. He says, don't be ashamed, yes God, of the gospel and don't be ashamed of me, its ambassador. What Paul is trying to tell you and I today is that wherever we go, we ought to be proud to say that we are a Christian. We ought not take it as a slight because we don't get invited. We ought not take it as a slight because the same folk that talk to your friends won't talk to you. There's something different about you. At least there ought to be. You ought to walk in a different kind of way. You ought to talk in a different kind of way. You ought to live in a different kind of way. Don't you be ashamed to be blood bought. Don't you be ashamed to be fire baptized. Don't you be ashamed to be Holy Ghost filled. Don't you be ashamed wherever you land to say on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking saying so what if you don't fit in. God has a record of using misfits. How do I know he has a record of using misfits? Because he told Abraham to go to a land that I'll show you and Abraham just got up and left because Abraham did not fit in. I know God has a record of using misfits because he used Daniel and told Daniel, don't you eat from the king's table and watch how I will bless you. Watch how I will develop you. Watch how I will elevate you. If you don't like Abraham and you don't like Daniel, I got one more misfit that God used and I'm trying to call his name and his name was Jesus. Jesus did not fit in for he said who is my brother or who is my sister he said foxes have holes and birds have nests but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head I'm trying to tell you that he didn't fit in but the Bible says that because he didn't fit in God has given him a name yes. <laughs> which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee Talking about misfits. Every knee has to bow. And every tongue must confess that this misfit, Jesus Christ, he is. Yes, he is. He is Lord. He's yes, Alpha he is. and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He, he, he's my way in. He's my way out. He's my way through. <laughs> He's my way to. He's my bridge over troubled water. I'm trying to tell you that if you got Jesus on your side, <laughs> come on. You've got what it takes. Yes. Amen. 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 And thank God. To God be the glory Amen. for the things that He has done. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 Congratulations, graduates. Yeah, you be sure to take the Lord with you. Because when you take him with you, you'll have what it takes to be successful. How do I know? Because the word declares, I'm finished, I'm just trying to quit. The word declares <laughs> that no weapon yes. formed against me shall prosper. Yes. And only a child of God can stand flat-footed and say that. Hallelujah. If you're under the sound of our voice today, 
you have never with your lips or with your heart asked or accepted Jesus Christ to serve as your personal Lord and Savior. We now offer him to you. He's the one that was born, hung, bled, and died, and soon to come again in order that you and I may have the right to eternal life. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And if you've never accepted him, I'm going to encourage you this week, as soon as you can. In fact, pick up the phone, call St. John, call St. Timothy, call some Bible-believing, Jesus-preaching church and tell them that you've already accepted. For the Bible says that if you just shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So we encourage you to make that confession and belief. If you're looking for a church home, somewhere where you can grow into the young man, the young woman, the young boy, the young girl that God would have you to be, take the same steps and call some church. we love to have you at St. John. We know uh, Pastor Jackson would love to have you here at St. Timothy. But what is important is that you're in some church where you can allow your gift to be stirred up and activated for the kingdom. Maybe you've already accepted him, but you just need to reinstate your membership. You have that option as well. Come by letter, candidate for baptism, Christian experience. But we love to have you in our prayer is that you don't let this day get away from you and not be in right relationship with Jesus Christ because can't nobody, nobody do me. Can't nobody. nobody. They can't do me like the Lord. Like the Singer Lord. from where you are. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. They can't do me. Do me like Jesus. What did he do? He picked me up. And he turned me. Turn me around. That's what he did. He picked me up. Me up. Turn me around. Pick me up. And he turned me. Turn me around. He is. He's my friend. One more time. Can't nobody. Can't nobody. Do me like Jesus. Can't nobody. Do me like the Lord. Can't nobody. Jesus, can nobody, nobody do me like the Lord? Like oh, the Lord. can nobody, nobody do me like, do me like Jesus? Oh, He's my Oh, I say, can nobody do me like Jesus? 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 Nobody, 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 oh, can't nobody do me like, do me like Jesus, can't nobody, the Lord, like oh, the Lord. can nobody, nobody do me like, do me like Jesus. oh, he's my grace. Now may his grace, may his love, may his peace be with us now and forevermore, that we take the Lord with us, and when we take the Lord with us, we've got what it takes. We thank you, O Lord, for our graduates. Be with them, O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.